Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Seattle Pilots and the California Angels at Anaheim Stadium. On the mound for the Pilots today is John Gelnar, whose record is 2-1 with a 2.95 ERA. And pitching for the Angels today is Jim McLaughlin, whose record is 2-13 with a 4.54 ERA. McLaughlin, not McLaughlin, McLaughlin. Some of these names, like Messer Smith, so hard for me to pronounce. Um, I'm not always going to get it right. Uh, we are coming off a win yesterday. More importantly, uh, we have won three of the four games since the All-Star break. So that's a good start. Uh, we beat two, uh, two out of three on the first place Twins. And we won yesterday's game uh, with some free baseball. We went to the 12th inning. And uh, won the game on a Freddie Patek base hit, of all things. So we'll take that. We'll take the victory any way we can get it. We had seven uh, innings uh, by our relievers, uh, not giving up any runs and only three hits. So a good performance from the bullpen. And I'm guessing we're going to have one or two bullpen arms that are unavailable for today's game. Um, before we get started with today's game, I want to do a quick reminder about the 1984 Detroit Tigers uh, season replay coming up. Let me pull it up right here. You'll see here's the schedule uh, for the preseason. Uh, this is a post that I have on, on YouTube. Um, I just have it here so uh, you know for visual uh, visualization. Uh, February 13th coming up uh, in just a week. Uh, we'll have the off-season free agent signing and trades review show where we'll take a look at all of the off-season signings uh, from the day after the World Series ended all the way through. I think you'll find it amazing uh, which players were free agents, which players went to what teams. Um, I made one big free agent splash trying to get the Tigers uh, into the playoffs and hopefully to the World Series. And then uh, for the next uh, four weeks after that, each Monday, we'll have a division preview starting with the American League East, um, followed by the West the following week. And then the National League East and West, the two Mondays uh, leading up to the start of the season, which will take place on April 1st. So it won't be long. I'll have the, um, the title card for opening day up probably uh, as, as soon as we get into March. And we can really start thinking about uh, the Tigers season replay. I have sp been spending a little bit of time every night uh, working on getting that uh sim ready to go and I, i'm actually so much more excited i think i'll be more ex excited about the pilots once we get to the second year of the pilots and make them a staple of the seattle uh and washington state um uh history that'll be fun but right now we're just playing the game and uh, i almost i'm not trying to blow through it i don't want to just get it over with but um I'm taking it seriously, but it's also, you know, I, I'm, I'm more I'm more excited for the Tiger series coming up than I am for doing what we're doing right now. Um, so let's see if we can't get the enthusiasm level up. Hey, we, all the bullpen is available today. That is bizarre. We had three pitchers pitch two innings, and yet they're all available today. And John Gelnar's on the mound, so we're probably going to need him. He very seldom gets through five innings. Here's our lineup versus the right-hander Jim McLaughlin. You know what? We gave um, we gave Gary Sutherland the day off yesterday. Let's get him back in there. We'll move him back to the top of the lineup where he belongs, and we will scoot Freddie Patek down to the bottom. Uh, otherwise, everybody else is where they belong. Okay, let's go ahead and do the official lineup rundown for the Seattle Pilots. Batting leadoff, playing second base, is Gary Sutherland. Batting second at first base is Mike Hegan. Batting third at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting cleanup, playing right field, is Joe Pepitone. Batting fifth in center field is Tommy Agee. Batting sixth in left field is Lou Pinella. Batting seventh in catching is Jerry McNertney. Batting eighth at shortstop is Freddie Patek. And batting ninth is the pitcher, John Gelnar. 
Okay, let's take a look at Jim McLaughlin making his 20th start. Uh, very sadly, he's 2-13 and 13 this year with a 4.54 ERA, 90 strikeouts in 134 and two-thirds innings. He doesn't really walk that many, and he doesn't really give up a ton of hits. Opponents are betting 263 against him. He's got three complete games and a shutout. So of his two wins, one of them was a shutout. Uh, his fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. His curveball uh, is his best pitch. It's rated at 84, and two other pitches below league average. Overall at 82, the 25-year-old righty goes to arbitration at the end of the year. Look at his log. Have we faced him yet this year? We have not. Um, and look at how many losses he's piled up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine losses in a row coming off a complete game loss to uh, the lowly Boston Red Sox. Okay, here's the defense for the Angels today. Looks like they have someone better out in right field. Jay Johnstone's getting his start in right. And for some reason, that Blackaby guy is out there in left. He's the only defender uh, with his rating under league average. Okay, Gary Sutherland leading off after getting a day off yesterday. Coming out and hitting the ground ball to second. That slight delay looked like it was going to sneak through. Instead, it's just a routine out by Bobby Canoop. One down. Here is Mike Hegan. Full count to Hegan, and there's a base hit. There we go. Hegan's average at 236. It's sad to see some of these good players whose averages are now under 240 as our team batting average is right around 230. Well, we'll, we'll definitely hit and run with uh, Rich Rollins, who does it the best on the team. Maybe Lou does it better. I'm not sure. As he hits a grounder to short, and Hegan advances to second. So two down, runner in scoring position for Joe Pepitone. Pepitone had a home run yesterday. His fourth on the season, second as a pilot. And a base hit into center field. Hegan will score. It is 1-0 Seattle. This is what I want. I want to see us get up early and don't look back. Just keep piling the runs on. Runner on first for Tommy Agee. Agee had his 16th home run in the ninth inning that tied the ball game up and sent us to extras. McLaughlin wants to walk him. Wants nothing to do with him. He'll take his chances with Lou Pinella. Pinella batting 278 with four home runs. He strokes it into left field. It's down up against the wall. Everybody's scoring. A two RBI double for Lou Pinella. That is his second double as a pilot. He's got 23 combined, which I believe is second in the American League total. Um, that I, you know, like we do have the makings of a good team, and I know we're beating up here on a a um, bottom feeder, but that's what we're supposed to do. As McNerty hits a ground ball to short, and that will be the final out of the inning. So we put a three spot on the board. We're feeling good. We go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the lineup for the California Angels. Batting leadoff in left field is Ethan Blackaby. General Manager of the Giants, it says. Batting second in right field is Jay Johnstone. Batting third in center field is Tom Silverio. Batting cleanup playing first base is Doug Howard. Batting fifth at second base is Bobby Canoop. Batting seventh and catching is... I'm sorry, it's batting sixth and catching is Randy Brown. Batting 7th at shortstop is Marty Perez. Batting 8th at third base is Bill Bethea. And batting ninth is the pitcher, McLaughlin. Let's take a look at John Gelnar. He is making his fourth start from uh, moving from the bullpen into the rotation. He is 2-1 with a 2.95 ERA. 16 strikeouts in 21 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 197 against him. Fastball tops out at 91 miles an hour. He's a one-pitch pitcher, a lot like Bob Meyer, who we saw yesterday. Uh, he's only got the fastball, rated in 85. Overall, 76, the 26-year-old ready. Goes to arbitration in 1971. 
I don't think we can have anything to go by. Oh, he has pitched. Well, look at that. He's pitched in three games as a reliever versus California and pitched six and a third. Scoreless innings, giving up only one hit and no walks. Getting a win in relief, so he has faced them. All right. Let's take a look at the defense for the Pilots. Salad everywhere except for behind the plate and at second base. Even Sutherland has gone down to 78 now. Um, and the error yesterday was by Rollins. That was a costly error. Okay. Here we go. Ethan Blackaby leading off. Blackaby batting 206, zero home runs. I mean, he's a general manager. <laughs> he's a general manager in a uniform today. Ground ball to first. One out. Next will be Jay Johnstone. One of the best baseball cards of all time. I think it was the 83 flare. Or maybe it was 84 flare. Where Johnstone was on the Dodgers. And he's wearing that Budweiser uh, Sun umbrella hat. Here he is popping it up. Down the first baseline. Where Hegan makes the grab. Oh, it says popped up behind home plate. So scratch that. We're going to give it to McNurtney. Two down for Tom Silverio. Dropping it into left field for a base hit. Who's our left fielder? Pinella. Pinella lets it fall in for a double. That is Silverio's eighth double of the year. Here is Doug Howard, first baseman, batting 321, two home runs. And he strikes out as Gelnar blows it by him. That's out number three. We go to the top of the second inning. With Freddie Patek leading off. He was the hero and the player of the game yesterday. He's got his average over 207. Popping it up here to begin the second. First baseman Howard making the catch. John Gelnar up. Gelnar two for four. On the season, I think he's got to have the most hits of any pitcher. And he makes contact. Solid. All the way to short. For out number two. And Gary Sutherland. Floats it into right center field. Sutherland's average is dropping. Just falling right off a cliff. Down to 309. The guy's got a 69 rating. I mean, you can't keep expect him to keep it up forever. Bobby Doop. No, Canoop, I should say. Batting 186. Yet they have him in the fifth spot. Gelnar drops it right into the strike zone. Nice curveball. Second K. First out of the inning. And Randy Brown, the catcher, up. Downtown, Randy Brown. Base hit to right. There is a runner on first now as the Angels get their second hit of the ball game. Now, here is uh, Marty Perez. A couple things I wanted to mention about Marty Perez. Not a deep dive. But something I'd learned about him uh, from living out here in Tucson, so I thought it'd be worth mentioning. So, Marty Perez, he's from California. He grew up in Visalia, California. But his father um, is from Mexico, and his mother is indigenous uh, to uh, South Arizona. She is part of the Yaqui tribe, and we have um, the, uh, the Yaqui Pasqua a reservation out here. So he's actually part of uh, um, that tribe's heritage. I thought that was very interesting. Uh, I couldn't find... I, I know that he's the only Major League ball player from the Yaqui to make it to the majors, um, but uh, I, I couldn't find uh, any other information other than one really interesting thing. It is supposed that his last game in the majors was for the A's on September 16th, 1978. He came into the game as a pinch runner, except that never happened. He was released by the A's on May 17th, signed by the Mets. For the, he was uh, sent to the minor leagues, a Tidewater Tide. And yet there, that is considered his final major league game. And yet there is no proof that he ever did it. And no one has ever claimed to have been that, that base runner. So, uh, a weird piece of Major League trivia in a game that, you know, categorizes everything. They cannot prove whether or not Marty Perez was the pinch runner in that ballgame. 
even though he was on the uh, Tidewater Tides. So, little interesting fact about, a couple of interesting facts about Marty Perez as he walks. All that filibustering uh, made uh, John Gelnar get a little wild there. Walked him on four straight pitches. First and second, one down. Here's Bill Bethea. Pitcher spot up next. Ground ball to third. Let's go around the horn. Maybe. Yes! Double play. 5-4-3, double play. We go to the top of the third inning with Mike Hegan leading off. He had a base hit. He had the first hit for the Pilots today. Strokes it down to first. Play made by Howard. One down. That will bring up Rich Rollins. Sharply hit ground ball to second. Bobby Canoop tossing him out. And Joe Pepitone with two outs gets a base hit. Do we want to go for two? We do not. Uh, Jay, Jay Johnstone's got a cannon out there, right? It's all right. Let's see if we can't get a two-out rally going. That happens a lot in this game. Tommy Agee up. He walked the first time. Here he hits a ground ball to Canoop, and that'll do it. We go to the bottom of the third inning with the pitcher spot up. It's Jim McLaughlin batting 0-27. 2-2 count, and he strikes him out. 91 mile an hour fastball. He's reaching back to get the pitcher out. One out for Ethan Blackaby. That's Gelnar's third strikeout today. Blackaby flying out to center. And Jay Johnstone. 2 0 count. Ground ball in the hole is short. Patek guns him out at first. Had to hurry as. Johnstone's got good legs. We go to the top of the fourth inning with Sweet Lou leading off. Pinella flips it to right field for a base hit. Good job by Lou. Next man up is McNertney. I would consider bunting here, but we're up three runs. It's still early. Let's let McNertney uh, take a cut here. He did have two hits in yesterday's game. So maybe he's working his way out of his slump as a ground ball to first. That should be a double. Yeah, no doubt about it. Pinella, not fast, and McNerty the catcher. Uh, that could have been any easier. And then Patek grounds out. Okay, going to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's a uh, 3-4-5 and five due up against Gelnar. This is where things tend to fall apart for, for our starting pitchers that are not named Brabender. Silverio gets a piece of that curveball, popping it up on the infield into the outfield grass. Shallow right field. Out number one. Next up is Dougie Howard. Striking out. Geldar looking pretty good against this inept team. Bobby Canoop. Ground ball to third. Come on, Rollins. Nicely done. Okay, we're going to the top of the fifth inning. I think we got to let Gelnar take another bat here. Seems capable. Oh, he strikes out. Look how low that pitch was. It says it. Wow. It says it crossed the strike zone there, but it landed down here. That's, that's crap. But uh, I'll accept it. That's only the first strikeout for McLaughlin today. Ground ball to third from Sutherland. He is struggling. Two outs and Mike Keegan at the plate. And he strikes out looking as well. That was the exact same pitch. And it says it crossed the plate up here. Oh my gosh. That's ridiculous. We're going to the bottom of the fifth inning. It's the bottom third of the lineup coming up. Actually, Randy Brown. He's in the um, sixth spot. A comebacker to Gelnar. Come on, Gelnar. Just underhand it. There we go. One out. Marty Perez up. Walked earlier. And he flips it over the first baseman's head. Into right field. Only getting a single out of that. Good job by Pepitone getting over there. Cutting it off. All right. Here is Bill Bethea. And he gets a base hit the center. So here we go. If it wasn't the fourth, it was going to be the fifth. They're not going to pinch 
uh, hit. So we're going to pull the corners in. I can't imagine he's going to lay down a bunt here. But just in case, he's swinging. Ground ball to third. Let's go home with it. Get him at home. A double play. 5-4-3. Double play. Around the horn. That is a... That I did not expect to happen. That's good. I like to be surprised. That doesn't feel like that would actually happen in real life. But, okay. I don't... I mean, I, I would imagine a manager would pull their infield in with the pitcher up. So I don't feel like I did something wrong there, but I'm not sure a double play would happen. They might hold the runner and maybe go to second for the force. Anyway, um, all right, here's uh, Rich Rollins in the sixth. Striking out, Rollins. Doesn't do that very often. Pepitone's up. Pepitone, two for two today. He's got two of the five hits. Ground ball to short. Two outs now for AG and an infield single for Tommy AG. Runner on first. Two down. I don't I don't think we need to steal here. I think we can let Lou attempt to get another double. Nope. Ground ball to second. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to the bottom of the sixth inning. Gildar looking good at 67 pitches. Okay. Let's see here. Lefties are coming up. So we're going to keep him on a short leash here. As Ethan Blackaby leads off. Rips it to right. Come on. Pepitone. Yes. On his horse. Moving right to get that ball. One out. Jay Johnstone at the plate. Flips it to left. That might fall in. Oh, it will be caught by the left fielder, Pinella. Two quick outs here for Gelnar as Tom Silverio strikes out swinging. I think we got to bring him out for one more inning here. Gelnar looking good against this terrible, terrible team. McNerty leading off against McLaughlin. Ground ball to short. One out. Freddy Patek. we got to give a nickname to Freddy Patek. I don't think he actually has a nickname, does he? Let's look at his vitals. Oh, the Flea. All right. That's a great nickname, the Flea. All right. Well, we're going to use that. And... Yeah, I think we're going to let Gelnar bat again. Why not? Ground ball to third. We will send him out there. It's uh, two righties and a lefty. Only Doug Howard has power. Batty 313 with a couple of home runs. Ground ball to short. Patek. Making the easy play. Here's Bobby Canoop. Ground ball, base, hit up the middle. All right. Well, if a 188 hitter gets a hit, that's not a good sign. Here's the catcher, Randy Brown. Maybe should have guarded the lines. Nope, doesn't matter. Popping it up at home plate. Please don't be an error. There we go. Okay. So that's going to bring up Marty Perez. He's been on base, base both times with a single and a walk. Ground ball to short. The flea. Tosses him out. We're going to the eighth inning. I think we got to keep sending Gelnar out there. Sutherland 0 for 4 today. I guess he might be done. Maybe he, he had all of his... Uh, Whatever his yearly totals are supposed to be. He's not good defensively, so it's like... If he can't hit now, and he's not getting on base with walks, and his defensive rating is a 78, he's really not any use to us. We could start putting uh, Van Kelly back in there. Okay, bottom of the eighth inning. It's the bottom of the lineup. you got to imagine they're going to pinch hit for McLaughlin. But we're going to give it a shot. In fact, we're going to take out Sutherland and bring in Van Kelly. 
We go from a 78 to an 87. That's pretty nifty. Here we go. Bill Bethea leading off. Oh, infield single. Jesus. Well, this is the last batter. He's going to face the uh, right-hander, Winston Yelanis. I believe is how you pronounce that. Runner on first. Oh, one count. Yeah, that's it. So, I mean, there was nothing we were going to be able to do to get him through that inning. Um, we got to bring in the lefty, Ron Locke. Um... Let's take a look at Locke real quick, his log especially. Yeah, he's been shaky. We've put him in some tough positions. I'm not certain that uh, I feel good about him being in there. Um, if a, the number eight hitter that's batting 200 gets an infield single, and then a pinch hitter gets a hit, which, they, you know, that's a really bad sign. We've improved our defense, but that's not going to make a difference. The game is going to do what the game wants to do here as Blackaby flies out into uh, foul territory of the third base side. Here's Jay Johnstone, a 125 hitter versus lefties. 0-2 count. That is a pop-up in fair tor territory. Rollins makes the catch. Okay, Locke can get us out of here, uh, out of this situation with this... Uh, batter Tom Silverio. Silverio betting 233 versus lefties. And he strikes him out on a screwball. That is fine pitching there from Ron Locke. We go to the top of the ninth inning with Tom Murphy up uh, uh, into the ball game. 0-2, 386 ERA. I think he might actually be their closer now. As you can see, he's put up some okay numbers so far. Joe Pepitone will lead off. Pepe! Line drive in the center. One down. Tommy Yeji strikes out. And Lou Pinilla, probably our player of the game. Get that two RBI double. Gets a ground ball to first. I don't know if we had a hit after the fifth inning. Okay, so we're going to bring in uh, Mike Marshall. I don't think he's had a save opportunity. And what seems like forever, yeah, he has not had a save opportunity in over a month. He does have three wins to his credit, though. Uh, but we just haven't had any close ball games for him to come in and shut him down. Great numbers. Probably should have been an all-star. For whatever reason, the American League did not choose a reliever. Doug Howard up. Striking him out. Sit him down. One out. Bobby Canoop, one two count. Oh crap, did he get all of it? Oh, it's gonna die at the wall for out number two. And Randy Brown looking to keep the uh, game alive here. Popping it up on the infield. Are we gonna get our 11th shutout of the season? We do. Pilots win three nothing. All three runs coming in the first inning. Handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy steaks. Well, I feel good about that. Um, there was even a little bit of drama in there, and, and Gelnar almost uh, got a complete game. Let's take a look at the standings. No trade offers. We are three and a half back. California has now lost double digits, 10 in a row, as we head into the final game of this series. <coughs> um... Oh, wow, and San Diego's lost six in a row. Okay, let's take a look at the headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Yeah, if you missed yesterday's game, Ron Santo got traded to Baltimore. Baltimore is a powerhouse. They're going to lose so much money this year unless they go to the World Series. Kansas City puts Oakland in the lead. As Oakland wins 2-1. to one. That's a weird way of putting that. Um... Nothing to say there. Okay. Uh, Cardinals win. As lefty Carlton had 13 strikeouts. Good job by him. We Our game didn't even get mentioned. Not even, not even a mention. 
Transactions. Uh, just one injury. Roger Metzger of the Cubbies is going to miss eight months. We'll see him in spring training. Uh, this guy was drafted and then put right into the majors. Is that what happened? No, I guess not. I guess he was just a rookie with no minor league experience. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. A lot of good stuff coming up. I'm excited. It's a bit... 2022 was a fun year, man. We we had the 1983 series. We had the Detroit Lions series. Now we got the, the pilots going. Uh, player of the game is uh, Lou Pinella. We got all the car breaks going. Um, I think I have something special coming up for card breaks. Uh, we'll, I'll let you know more of that shortly. Uh, Lou Pinella's got his 23rd double overall. Gelnar gets the win going uh, seven innings. Uh, and his record is now 3-1. and one. Mike Marshall does get his 15th save. McLaughlin takes a loss. He's 2-14. and 14. Pitched pretty well. I think you would agree. Um, and uh, Murphy comes in. And he does his gerb. So that's going to do it for today. We'll come back tomorrow with Game 3 of the three-game series. Until then, everyone have a great day.